Okay, so now we see that we have um, some sort of horizontal motion, but um, to make this more like the actual game Bonk Dio and actually have some fun with it, um, we need to add in the horizontal forces maybe to get a little more control over the blob so we can actually move it around and do what we want to do with it. Um, so we'll add in this line of code right here. So this right here is going to give us our horizontal forces. Um, so we start off um, with our f of x equals zero. Um, that's all well and good. Then we have this if statement right here, which um, is showing us that if we press the left arrow key down, we're going to get a force of negative 15. So that's going to move the ball to, to the left when we press down the left arrow key. So then we do the same thing. We have this uh, if statement uh, right below it, which uh, same thing just to the right. We'll get a positive uh, 15 for f of x um, when we press down the right arrow key. And then we go down, we have this next expression uh, right here, f of f net of x uh, equals f of x. Now, and you also notice uh, right next to it, you have this little uh, extra step, this why the extra step comment. Now, for the x direction, this isn't actually necessary technically, but this is going to be very useful when we add in uh, multiple you know, other forces when it's not just one force. And we're going to do this a little later on with the y direction. We're going to add in uh, another force, which we're going to actually need this net uh, force expression for that once we get there. Then below it, we have our a of x equals our um, f net of x over our mass, which if any of you, a lot of you guys probably are familiar with it, uh, the Newton's second law, f equals ma. Um, you know, it's our, we have our mass times our acceleration and that gives us our net force. So here, this expression right here is just our F equals MA solved for our acceleration in the X direction rather than solving it uh, for our net force. So we have our F net of X over M. And then last we have our delta F, um, V of X, which um, is equal to our acceleration times our uh, small change in time delta t. So our acceleration multiplied by our time is related to our velocity. So then once we um, copy this over, um, so let's put this right above this if statement and right next to our uh, delta v y. And again, when we're pasting, copying and pasting, we'll do control v. So we'll put that in um, and let's run this and see what it gives us. So then if I click, say, down with the left, you see that acceleration vector kind of changes. It's uh, not straight down anymore. If I do the same thing with the right, gets it moving faster in the, uh, towards the right. And so we can kind of move the blob around you know, with the arrow keys rather than just trying to give it an initial velocity and just letting it uh, go off the screen. So we can kind of move it around a little bit. It gives us a little more control over the blob. So then next we can just add arrows to show this horizontal force because you know we have those acceleration vectors and we have the velocity vectors um, showing um, the motion. So let's do the same thing for our horizontal force and kind of get a better idea of what that looks like. So we'll copy that over and we want to put that below our display function. And again, control V to paste that in. And then we'll run the code here. And then now if I press down the left arrow key you can s or the right arrow key, you see the horizontal force vector is perpendicular to the uh, force vector in the y direction. And you know because it's perpendicular to it, it kind of makes sense then the acceleration vector um, is on that like diagonal like it was before, um, since we have a force in the x and a force in the y. So then again, and then we can add some code to show the path of the ball, which we've done this before again in a sp like the lunar lander game that we had before. We showed the path of the ball, um, so we can copy that over. Again, put that under our display function, and now we can see the path of the ball. You got those little dots following the motion of the ball as I move it around with the left and right arrow keys. So that's. So that's all some, some fun stuff. So now what can we do this to, uh, can we visualize this graphically? Um, and there is a way to do that. And to do that, Blythe's going to tell us a little bit about what this code is going to help us do with the graph. 
Okay, so we're now we're going to visualize the vertical component of that velocity vector as the blob travels. So let's copy this code that will produce that graph and see what that looks like. So let's stop that, paste this in after our after our display. Okay, so let's see what type of graph this produces for us. I'm just going to manipulate the ball a little bit. And we see that this graph is growing in time. And even though I'm applying forces in the horizontal direction, we're, it's not changing the shape of this graph because we're just looking at the vertical component. Okay, so now that we see what sort of graph it's producing, um, Let's look at it again and try to figure out why it has this weird jagged sawtooth pattern. So since uh, this might relate to the bouncing action that we observe, I want to see more bounces. And so to make it easier for myself, I'll just set that to zero. And hopefully that will produce a nice graph for us to look at. Okay, so we see that it gets to this point in the, uh, this top point in the graph right after it hits the ground. So you see that. So what it's doing there is it's jumping from being negative, it's pointing down, and in that very small instant where it, it's representing the collision between the blob and the wall, it's reversing the direction of that velocity vector. So we go very quickly from negative to positive. 